Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Now, this part, this is more kind of turned inward towards us as believers. This is one of those messages that kind of, when he gets to the heavenly body, this is only pertains to the ones that, be, that believe. That's us. But this one is good. Oh, I got, I got singing and everything. Sit, hear the hymns singing? Oh, I love it. I'm going to be real Pentecostal by the end of this message, man. Hang on. Hang on. It's like the choir going on while I'm preaching. All right, here we go. Look at verse 35 with me. But someone might say, how are the dead raised? And with what kind of body do they come? That's a legit question. But Paul writes to this church, you fool. That which you sow does not come to life unless it dies. He says, in that which you sow, you don't sow the body which is to be, but you sow a bare grain, perhaps of wheat or something else. And, but God gives it a body just as he wished, and to each of the seeds of a, a, a body of its own. All flesh, he says, is not the same flesh. But there is one flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another flesh of birds, another of fish. There are also heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. But the glory of the heavenly is one, and the glory of the earthly is another. Just as the glory of the sun and it is differ, differs in as another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For the stars differ from glory to glory. You ever looked into the night sky and seen one star's got a bright blue kind of hue to it, another one's got a little twinkle, but it's a little different color. And I mean, they all have different glory. Paul says that just like we have differing, differing things that come from the seeds that are sown. And he says, you, what you see here, that if you take a seed, how many of you have been on a farm, you planted a corn or wheat or, you know, when you plant the, the grain, what you're putting in the ground is not going to be what you get out. Paul used a great analogy for me growing up. I know this one, that they take a little wheat seed, you put it down in the ground. And I love that they have these things on the Learning Channel now. They have this where they put the like, seed against the glass and they have that time lapse thing, you know, where the, you see the little seed, it's, a, it, it's in the soil, but it goes and pops open. And then the little white thing comes out and you see the plant going up and then a little root going down. And anyone know what I'm talking about? You see, like, I like because it's fast motion. I don't have to wait, you know, 60 days to, for the plant to pop out. But it's, it's like in a minute lap, time lapse thing. And, but anyone ever pay attention to the little seed itself, the wheat, when, it's, when it starts? Did you ever notice it actually looks like it moves a little? It jiggles, and then it pops open. And then out comes that little plant, that little white shoot, and, and it, it starts reaching towards the surface, and the little roots start coming down. And if you pay close attention to the seed itself, what happens to the actual seed? falls away it doesn't even it's not even part of what the, the new life is the new plant it's just what was the hull of the leftover that gave the life to that the shell it's gone Paul is referring to this body as our shell that seed that little housing our spirit but when our spirit is going to go into the new body he said it's not going to be like this body it's going to be completely different glory, like the living plant that comes out of it. And, I mean, you can't even compare. You have to, it's, well, Jesus said, you guys, unless you're willing to die, you can't live. It's just part of, and he used the same analogy. Anyone who wants to hold on to their life, tries to gain it, is going to lose it. But if you lose your life, you let your life just be, well, kind of like you, you just willingly say, I, I give it up, then God will take your life and make it just blossom into something glorious. Glorious. And that's, I love this analogy. But Paul is saying, guys, and I know that they had questions because I can just hear it in my head because from teaching the kids. Somebody wrote and said, what about our heavenly bodies? 
Now, Paul's going, man, they don't even compare the glory of this one to the glory of their heavenly. But let's go on. Verse 42, he says, So also in the resurrection of the dead, it's sown in perish a perishable body, but it will be raised in an imperishable body. It's sown in dishonor, but it will be raised in glory. It's sown in weakness, and it's raised in what? Power. It's sown as a natural body, but it is raised as a spiritual body. And if there is a natural body, then Paul says there is also a spiritual body. This is one of the greatest things of the gospel to teach to the Christians because they already know Christ died for their sins, but they need to know that reassurance that there is a heavenly body waiting for your spirit. Your spirit, it says, well, we'll get to this, but not for some time in 2 Corinthians. It says we were created for this very purpose. God created us so that this, this spirit that's inside us we're not made for death. We're made to be swallowed up by life. And God prepared us for that and gave us his spirit as a promise that he was going to accomplish that. So Paul goes on and says, verse 45, So also it is written, the first man, Adam, he became a living soul. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but rather the natural, then the spiritual. The first man is from the earth. He's earthy. The second man, who's the second man he's talking about? Jesus. He's from where? Heaven. heaven. As is the earthy, so are also those who are earthy. As is the heavenly, so also are those who are heavenly. And just as we have borne the image of the earthy, you might want to highlight this last part of verse 49, so also we get to bear the image of what? The heavenly. Guys, this is one of the best messages to give to Christians I know that someday, did you know, you get to upgrade and bear the image of a heavenly body. You're going to not be in this. He, when we get there, now, I, I cheated. I read to the end of the book. That's always good to do. Well, I mean, you want to do the whole thing, but some of us skip to the end just to get the stuff, and then we go back. And in Revelation, when I was a new believer, I was like, I, I was like let's find out how this all ends, you know. And at the end of the book, you have the words of Jesus himself. Paul says that Jesus revealed, or I'm sorry, not Paul, John, the apostle, says this message was given to him from the Lord. And he sits here telling us in chapter 21, can I read it? Look to, to Revelation 21. Listen to, to these words. Then I, John says, then I saw a new heaven, a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away. And there was no longer any sea. I saw a holy city, a new Jerusalem coming down, as a, as a, uh, out of heaven of God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from, from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is amongst men, and he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. And he will wipe away every what? Tear. Every tear from their eyes. There will no longer be any death, there will no longer be any mourning. There will no, no longer be any crying or pain for the first things. Have, what, a, I can't even, what a cool day that's going to be, huh? No more tears. The only tears I know of that are even mentioned in Scripture for heaven are called tears of joy. In the psalm, the, the psalm said the tears of joy, not, not tears of crying of pain. I, I can't even think of how many times I cried tears of joy down here. But, you know, that'll be nice. Nice upgrade. And he who sits on the throne, it says, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write, for these words are faithful and true. I got peace. Love. Sorry, I'm hearing the songs. It's my worship leader side coming up. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of water of life without cost. He who overcomes will inherit these things. I will be his God. You might want to highlight verse 7. And he will be my what? My child, my son. Whatever translation is it. You're in his family. Anybody think this is good? Amen. 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 But for the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the immoral persons, the sorcerers, the idolaters, all liars, their part will be in the lake what burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death. 
This is not, it doesn't give comfort to the one who doesn't repent of their sin. You know, that's why, now, Paul even said, such were some of us, that we, we did this whole list, you know. But we came to Christ and said, forgive us our sin. You know, and Christ's forgiveness is so thorough if we come to him. But if you want to say, well, I'm going to march in with my sin and I'm getting in anyway, good luck. Again, it doesn't work. I'm sorry, it doesn't. I mean, we're talking resurrection message here about Christ rising first and us following him by his power of resurrection. And, you know, I think of the words in John's gospel in chapter 5. John wrote these words. He said, he talks about two resurrections. I don't know if some of you have probably read this before, but in chapter 25, or verse 25 of John 5, he said, truly, truly, or verily, verily, if you have a King James, verily means truly. This is the truth. Truth be told, truth be told, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you that the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Now this is when Jesus was on the earth before he first, you know, after he, he gets crucified, what we, what we read about in Ephesians, before he ascended, he first what? Descended, preached, released to the captives. Jesus is telling his disciples, I'm, gonna, I'm telling you that verily, verily, I'm going to, I'm going to, there's a time coming when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. He was, he was giving them a heads up. I'm going to go and preach release. And listen to this. Those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, even so he gave to the Son also to have life in himself. And he gave him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Now, don't marvel at this, for an hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice. Jesus was telling us that everyone who died before the Christ came, they were waiting. You know, we read about it in Luke 16, in Abraham's bosom, they were waiting. The ones that died in faith, the ones that didn't, they went to a place down below, that called Hades, and there was a chasm fixed between them. And Jesus says, it, I tell you, all in the tombs are going to hear his voice and will come forth. And those who did good deeds will come forth to a resurrection of life. And those who did evil deeds, what do they come forth to? A resurrection of what? Judgment. Death. Not good. So if someone says, should you do good in your life? Yes. <laughs> Why? Well, I'm pretty sure right here it's simple. You know, this is the kind of stuff I can teach Sunday school. You do good deeds, resurrection of life. Good deeds equals resurrection life. Bad deeds equals what? Death. Resurrection of death. They're still getting resurrection, but not to go into eternal life and peace and joy with God and not, you know, be in His presence. I mean, this is what you, like, old-time religion, you know, those, those um, what they call the fire and brimstone preachers back, you know, like way back in the year, you know, in, in our country, you know, basically, you know, Turn or burn, you know, they're just like, this is it. There's going to be a resurrection of life for everyone who does good, a resurrection to judgment who does evil. Don't do evil. I mean, that's what you can boil the whole thing down to. We should do good. We should. I mean, the Lord made us for that. And it makes us a light wherever he puts us that we do this. Now, who said these words, what I just read you? Who said this? I mean, John wrote it, but if you, you can cheat. Mine has that feature, words of Christ in red. Can anyone see? Jesus, it's in red. He said, this is what's going to happen. And he says, I can do nothing of my own initiative. As I hear, he says, I judge. And my judgment is just. He says, because I don't seek my own will, but I seek the will of him who sent me. And I alone testify about myself, my testimony. He says, if I alone testify about myself, my testimony is not true. But there is another who testifies of me. And I know that that testimony which he gives about me is true. Who testified about Jesus? What was that, where did that voice come from that said, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. You guys remember that on the Mount of Transfiguration? Who, whose voice was that? God's. He goes, if I just made this up myself, it's not true. But um, there's another guy who testified. And, and, and by the way, the guy writing this gospel, John, he was there. He, Peter, James, and John were taken to the mount with Jesus. And he heard the voice that came from heaven. 
and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am. Can you imagine that? Anyone think that, that if we had a time machine and I said, I'm just going to take you to one thing in the Bible. We're going to just do like a quick visit. But we're going to zip back. Bill, you want to go for five minutes? We're just going to be there right when, when the voice of God comes from heaven to Peter and James and John and says, this is my beloved. Who would want to hear God's voice besides me? I mean, is it, I'm trying to pick a good highlight. If we could only go for a couple seconds or just a couple minutes, I want to be there right when the voice of God comes from heaven and testifies of Jesus. So when someone says, why are you believing this Jesus guy? Listen, man, I was there. I heard, his, I heard God's voice come over the PA. I mean, you know. And that would be a nice way to, that would be really, you know, I think it would be faith building. I don't know about you, but. I mean, it'd be a pretty good day to visit on, you know? And John says, Jesus said his testimony wouldn't even be true if he was just saying it about himself. But he said someone else above spoke of him that is true. So, so just like stamp of, Jesus was cool to me. He's like, look, if I just made this up, you guys shouldn't follow me. But I didn't just make it up. I got someone else, the father who testifies that what I'm saying is true. See, God put his stamp on this message, I'm telling you, and said, my son did this for you. And he says, the most simplest thing, and I'll end with this today, the most simplest message you could ever give to someone when they come to know about the Lord, and about God the Father, is that Jesus, Jesus, God said about his son, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And he said three more words, listen, what? To him. If I could tell you anything to do with your week this week is listen to Jesus. Just listen to him. He wants to speak to you. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He has he can do it. He knows what you he knows what you need to hear. But as a pastor, I mean, I rejoice this is 26 years for my wife and I being here doing Sunday services is a milestone for us. I just think, "Wow, man, that's so cool. You're so faithful, Lord." But when people say to me, well, how did you make it? How did you get all this stuff? I mean, how did, like, and I think, you, you're going to laugh because it's really simple. It's the number one thing I can tell everyone to do. Listen to Jesus. All you have to do, now, it, it's, not, it's not like, okay, this guy has called me up and say, hey, pastor, I feel like the Lord's telling me I should do this and this and this and that. What do you think? You know what my answer is going to be, right? If the Lord is telling you, like, I hate when they do this. Pastor, yeah, I was driving home from Costco. There was a guy broke down on the side of the road, and I went by, and I felt like I should stop, you know, like God was saying, you should stop and give him a hand, you know? And I'm like, so I'm waiting for the testimony to unfold. And, and the guy goes, and I'm like, yeah, and? And he goes, I, I, well, I didn't stop. I was wondering, could you go out there? Don't, no, seriously, guys, honest, this has happened to me so many times. And you know, my answer is, God, I wasn't the one driving by that saw the person. I wasn't the one that God spoke to to stop and give aid to the person. Who was the one God was trying to tell to do it? The person calling me. And if God is speaking to you to do something, stop, give that person a hand, then my, this is what I'm ending on, my word to you is three words. What, what God spoke from heaven to the disciples. Listen to him. If he says do it, then do it. Now listening isn't just saying, oh, I heard it. I felt a move, but, but I didn't do anything. That's not what I'm talking about. The, the listening I'm describing, when, when, you think when God said to those guys, listen to him, he meant just listen but don't do anything no he's saying hear what he says so you know what to do this listening is an action listening this is the this is how you get the the, the actual knowledge what your the action is supposed to be is you listen to what he says and when people say how do you make it i said man you just don't get it it's just sim it's it's going to sound so simple, but everyone tells me, yeah, well, if I had miracles happen like that for me, Pastor, like happened for you, and I'm like, did you listen when he said to stop? 
or when he said to go, or when he said to go help that person. And they're like, well, yeah, I, uh, have you ever heard the Lord tell you stop? Maybe stop doing that sin, or start doing this, or go help that person. Yeah. Did you do it? Well, I thought about it. That's not what I'm talking about. If you want to be blessed in all that you do, we just went over this on the Friday night, family night. If you want to be blessed in all that you do, James wrote some really simple words. Don't be just a hearer of the word, be a what? A doer. A doer. In other words, when you hear the word what God speaks to you, do it. And you will be blessed in what you do. When you do what He says to do. And that isn't do what other men, like some, sometimes men get on these weird power trips in America. They have this like weird lording over people. It's the same. They have that, those Pharisee guys in the Bible days. Do you know that we have Pharisaical Christianity today? Where some men are trying to pretend they, they, they're in the position speaking for God. I tell you what to do. You're one of the peons in the church. You just do what I say. And, and I'm like, you know, Jesus said, I hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans in the book of Revelations. Nico is lordship, lord or masters, laetin, laity, the common. You break down that word, Nicolaitan means the, the ones who lord over the, over the people. He says, I hate their deeds. God doesn't want any other man lording over you. He wants men girding you up and encouraging you, lifting you up, saying, you can do it. Do what the Lord tells you. You can do it, man. Do it. Look, look. Just do what he shows you, and you will be blessed. I hope that this sticks with you this week. I don't know any better message to preach to you than listen to him. And don't be fooled. Don't be deceived. Bad company will corrupt good morals. Be sober-minded. Stop sinning. I mean, we got a great promise of a heavenly body. And, I, you know, I've gone over some of the attributes. I might even go back to them next week. Well, there's a little bit more about the resurrection stuff. Like, uh, you know, these new bodies kind of have the ability to cloak, disappear, vanish, reappear, you know. Kind of like a little sci-fi-ish like Star Trek, but it's cool. I think they read this book to cheat for inspiration, to be honest. So. You know, pretty sure. Just, just Star Wars, those guys, they were reading this. You know, Obi-Wan Kenobi and a few of those guys. They even pick biblical names and put them in the, in the thing. You know, you just think, man, somebody was reading the, the good book. Like, this is a good name. Let's use this one. A lot of those Old Testament names show up in that, in that movie. You notice? Pretty interesting. Well, anyway, let's make sure we're the ones that don't just hear but don't obey. We're going to be the ones that really listen. We're listening so we can know what to do, so we can follow what His voice tells us to do. May you be blessed this week. May your, may your ability to hear what His Spirit speaks to you be increased. May the things that, so, that would distract or hinder or even perhaps be like um, if certain sins are like cotton balls in our ears, Lord. I pray you would move those sins from us that our hearing would be unimpeded we could hear you clearly hear that 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 whisper even of your spirit as you try to guide us lord make it that we would hear you and if you need to shout lord we, we don't mind just make sure we hear you that we can follow you i ask that for each person here each one that will listen later through the internet or the over the radio lord may it these words just help strengthen them as they continue to serve you until until you send your son for us father we pray that you give us strength in Jesus' name. And everyone that agree with me said? Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me listening to a closing song and send you off in the joy of the Lord? And Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.